Looks, do they matter when you buy a guitar? Well, I think they do. And in today's Hangout, I'll not only tell you why, but I'll actually tell you the story of the guitar that changed my tune on the whole subject. Hey, cut it out, cut it out. Mona's gonna ask me to call the cops. You wouldn't do that to me, would you, man? He just got out of Joliet. He's on parole. You can't call the cops on him, man. We're putting the band back together. I said no, absolutely not. Before I tell you the story of this guitar, I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. Acoustic Tuesday is gearing up for a brand new season starting in mid-October. And you might be thinking to yourself, Tone, mid-October, I need my Acoustic Tuesday. Don't, don't worry, please don't worry. Let me explain. I've got some splaining to do. Uh, Whitney, my wife and I are expecting a new baby boy September 18th, somewhere in there. And I'm taking this time to be at home, help her out around the house, and ultimately prepare for the arrival of our new baby boy, Emerson Towns. But don't worry, in the meantime, I'll still be delivering to you a full-on Guitar Geek list, but I'll be doing so from the home front. So yes, you're gonna get some new dad, some new Guitar Geek dad uh, life experiences uh, delivered directly to you until that new season starts in the middle of October. I am super excited to be sharing this time with you and uh, kind of the excitement of, uh, of a new family member arriving, but also, well, the excitement of that new season of Acoustic Tuesday. So now that we're all on the same page, let's go ahead and dig into the story of this guitar, the custom Martin OM, a guitar that I like to call the Tuxedo. This custom Martin OM that I'm holding is one that I actually designed. And this is the very guitar that kind of changed my tune about how looks or the aesthetic appeal of a guitar play into how we make purchasing decisions. Now you might be one of those guitar geeks that says, you know what, I don't care if a guitar is neon pink with neon green polka dots and bedazzled gems all over it. If it sounds good, it is good. And I only shop by tone. And there's a pretty good portion of me that, well, subscribes to that train of belief. But I will say this, I'll make a bold statement. I think looks play into how we purchase guitars a lot more than we'd like to believe. And again, I think this story, uh, the guitar that, that uh, this story, the story that this guitar has uh, very perfectly illustrates that. Now I'm gonna tell you the story of this guitar, but I've been getting a ton of questions about my home studio or my guitar geek den. So a little bit later today, I wanna take you on a, a, well, a little mini tour of my guitar geek den so you can see what I surround myself with to kind of inspire me and things like that. So uh, that is coming up, but uh, let's stay on topic. I'll try my best to stay on topic and talk about this custom uh, OM from the folks at Martin Guitar. So I designed this guitar, as I mentioned, uh, not for me. I designed it for the store I was working for. For those of you who don't know, I worked at Music Villa in Bozeman here uh, for quite some time, taught lessons, uh, reviewed guitars for them, the acoustic letter, and um, really uh, kind of it was some formative time in my guitar geek journey. But at one point in time, some years back, Paul Decker, the owner, said, hey, I've got a trip planned to Martin Guitars. I'm gonna spec out about 12 to 16 guitars for the shop, and I'd love for you to come along and spec out some of those with me. And this was one of those questions where when you're asked it, you're, you kind of have to pinch yourself because you're like, wait a minute. I get to go to Martin Guitars and I get to pick out tone woods, pick out specs, work with the folks in the custom shop and design guitars. And, and, and I don't have to pay for them. Uh, it was kind of, a, kind of a cool moment. I don't mean, I mean, obviously somebody's paying for them. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not totally ahead in the clouds, but it was pretty cool to be able to have that experience. Uh, so Paul and I went out to Martin. We spent, I believe we spent about three days at Martin. And then we actually headed out, I believe it's further east. We went out to Paul Reed Smith Guitars. That's a whole different story for, for another time. Um, but so we spent a good chunk of time at uh, Martin's Custom Shop uh, and, and overall the, the entire factory, you know, touring the whole thing, looking at the design and build process. And then the final day we were able to pick out tone woods and spec out guitars. And I went into the Custom Shop with uh, a very specific idea and it was purely based on looks because I wanted to design a guitar that would stand out on the showroom floor. That would be classy, not over the top, but kind of eye-catching in, in a different kind of way. So I thought, oh, I really want to make a high contrast guitar. Think of like a tuxedo, you know, black and white. 
So I picked out, well, the whitest tone woods that I could find. Again, this was not based on tone, this was based on color. So I picked out the whitest tone woods I could find. Uh, an Italian spruce top, a high altitude, I believe it's a high altitude, no, this is a Swiss spruce top, I'm sorry, high altitude Swiss spruce top, Swiss spruce top, and then the back and sides are bird's eye maple, another very kind of pale tone wood. And I thought, well, this is awesome because I've achieved uh, what I've set out to do, and that's pick out the whitest, palest tone woods I possibly can. And then I thought, well, this is going to be great because I want to accent it with dark black, right? Think, think very dark ebony or a dark black Bolteron binding with this, which is actually what this has. It's got black binding around the outside. It's got a black center strip, a maple neck with a black strip there. And then the headstock overlay is beautiful. It's very high contrast, bird's eye maple with Martin inlaid in black, uh, black ebony buttoned Waverly tuners. Uh, obviously, Ebony Bridge and a couple of uh, fancy appointments as well. We've got the, the Foden Mother of Pearl inlay there on the, the fretboard. And then there's a White Mother of Pearl purfling around the entire top. And then this, this White Mother of Pearl diamond rosette, which I believe only appears on the Mark Knopfler signature guitar. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I know it's, a, it's, a, it's not necessarily the most common rosette. Nonetheless, I designed this guitar to make a visual impact, and I think I did a great job. So the months went by. We had returned back to Bozeman. We had been there for quite some time, and I kind of actually forgot about the guitar because, well, it takes a while for a guitar to be built, plain and simple. Even, you know, even for the folks at Martin, a custom guitar takes some time. I mean, there's a lot of handwork that goes into it. But eventually, this guitar came to be. It came to the shop. And as soon as I laid eyes on it, I thought, this is so cool. And they even added this little touch of a, a, a case with blacked out latches to kind of add to that tuxedo theme. Really great attention to detail. Uh, so this guitar came in and I thought, cool, uh, mission accomplished because uh, this guitar is striking. Uh, and I had no interest in it whatsoever. In fact, I'll make a confession right now. For the longest time, I said, I hate maple as a tone wood. I don't like it. I think it's brittle. I think it's too crispy. I think it's thin sounding. I just don't like it. And I would kind of almost turn my nose up at maple guitars, uh, maple back and side acoustic guitars, because I thought, oh, that's just the, it just does not sound good. Well, I sat down to review this guitar, and this guitar not only exceeded my expectations visually, it exceeded my expectations tonally. It had this wonderful depth of tone. It had this beautiful, robust bass, and it had this wonderful airiness to it, this articulation, this, this brilliance that I think is due to the maple, the tone wood that I said I didn't like. Um, and this guitar very quickly became top of mind for me. And for a couple of reasons, just to be honest, I mean, I was very much involved with the design of this guitar, so I was already kind of pulled to it. I had this attachment to it. And after I reviewed it and heard the, the sound, I then had much more of an attachment to it because I thought, this guitar sounds simply amazing. Um, I don't think I can watch it go out the front door of the store if it's not in my hands. I felt kind of immediately protective over this guitar because I had been with it since its uh, inception, I guess, if we're talking about Whitney and I uh, having babies and this guitar is kind of like a, a baby of mine. Anyway, I know that's kind of a weird, weird uh, parallel there. Anyways, um, so this guitar was literally one that kept me up at night. And I thought to myself, I, I have to make this guitar mine. So I worked out a, a deal with Paul. He, he allowed me to, to actually put it on layaway because I, I couldn't afford it at the time. Um, but after making payment after payment after payment, selling things on eBay and all sorts of things like that, um, no organs, uh, I, I, this guitar came home with me and I've just loved it ever since. And I've fallen even more in love with it. It's, it's way that it handles alternate tunings is just insane. I mean, it just, it, each string speaks so brilliantly clear and it just, it has this wonderful little rattle there. It's tuned down to a low C, but the guitar is, is extremely composed in those lower tunings and that's what really, this guitar shines. And ultimately, this guitar taught me a huge lesson and that looks play a huge part in how we purchase instruments. 
And this is, this is something I've, I've taken into account even in designing, I'm currently in the process of specking out a custom guitar uh, from Tom Sands uh, over in the, in the UK. And I'm so excited because I've designed the guitar and picked out specs so that not only is it tonally appealing, but it's gonna be visually appealing as well. And I just wanna share three things, three, three reasons why I think looks make a huge impact in how we purchase guitars. And the first one is inspiration. Yes, inspiration makes a huge difference in our guitar journeys. And if you have a guitar that you like looking at, if you have a guitar that catches your eye, if, you're ha if you have a guitar that screams at you, please play me, I'm a beautiful instrument, you're inspired to pick up that instrument. So looks actually kind of segue into inspiration and ultimately motivation to play. The second reason looks make a huge, huge difference is identity. And I know this, this might sound superficial, but in creating a habit, identity is actually one of the most important pieces. So if you have a guitar that, that you look at and you think, man, that guitar is, is significant of me and my commitment to playing guitar, that makes a huge difference. And a lot of times, looks segue right into that. Now, I'm not saying that all guitars need to be glitzy and over the top inlaid. You might find a guitar that's just kind of a plain Jane, you know, a plain spruce top, plain mahogany back and sides, and just simple black or tortoise shell binding. That might be beautiful to you, and that's totally fine. This is, this is very, uh, you know, different strokes for different folks kind of territory, but ultimately, our identity is tied in with the guitar that we play. So when you choose something that looks beautiful to you, it gives you that much more reason to go and play it. It gives you that much more reason to pick it up every single day, day after day, and create this beautiful playing habit. And then the final thing that I think is so, so important uh, when purchasing a guitar in terms of its looks and why looks play such a huge impact is that we have a certain amount of pride in our instruments. Guitar geeks like you and I have pride in the guitars that we play, the guitars that we hang on our wall, the guitars that we show other guitar geeks. And I'm not saying this, this, this sense of pride in, in, a, in, a, in a bragging way, but a sense of pride. And I think it goes in with the identity piece too, in that, yeah, this is my guitar and I truly love it. And it, and it makes me happy in so many ways, from the way that it sounds to the way that it looks. And oftentimes, Looks are what draws to the guitar immediately. Looks are the first thing that we're taken by when we look at guitars. So to say that they don't factor into guitar buying, I think is a myth. I think they very much do. Looks can provide inspiration. Looks can provide kind of that identity piece within the guitar. And looks can provide a sense of, of pride in the instrument that you play. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. So I think looks make a huge impact in our purchasing decisions. And ultimately, I want you to take that into account when you buy a guitar or when you look at the guitars that you already have. What drew you to that guitar in the first place? Maybe it's the beautiful tuner buttons. Maybe it's the way that the pick guard looks against the top. Maybe it's the rosette. Maybe it's the bridge pins. Maybe it's the back and side wood. In fact, this leads me to a question. Now, not all guitars need to be over the top glitzy. Not all guitars need to be uh, inlaid to the hilt to be beautiful, which is what I wanna ask you. What is the most beautiful aspect of a guitar in your eyes? Again, maybe it's the rosette, maybe it's the pick guard, maybe it's the bridge, the bridge pins, the back and sides, the headstock, the tuners, the fretboard inlay. Maybe it's the back of the neck, maybe it's the volute on the back of the headstock. Whatever the case may be, in the comments below, please let me know what you think the most beautiful aspect of a guitar is. I'm just dying to know what you think it is. For me, I'll tell you right now, it's a little geeky. It's this area of the bridge and the strings right here, like this little cross section, where you get the pick guard, the bridge, the saddle, the strings, and even a piece of the rosette. This, if we were to draw a square, that's what I think is the most beautiful aspect of an acoustic guitar. But again, I want to know yours. Go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Now, while you're thinking about that, I want to gear up. I actually have to tidy up my Guitar Geek Den right here for a little bit. But uh, once I tidy up, let me take you on a tour of, well, the place that I call my Guitar Geek Den or my uh, at-home musical inspiration station. 
If you say no, Elwood and I will come here for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day of the week. Okay, okay, I'll play, you got me. I've cleaned things up a bit and I want to take you on a tour of my guitar den. This is the place where I practice, this is the place where I rehearse, this is the place where I write lessons, this is the place where I listen to music. And yes, it is a tiny room, but it's packed full of stuff that really is near and dear to me and provides the environment that kind of facilitates my guitar routine. It's a place that I simply want to be. So I'm going to do this uh, wall by wall. And we're going to start out with the wall that you actually see the most. This wall directly behind me, which is kind of the guitar and record wall. Let me give you a closer look. As we do this tour, I'm going to be sharing with you some specifics in my room and some of the things and products that I use that I recommend. And the reason I'm recommending these is because, well, I use them and I've been very successful with them in terms of making this room a room that I really want to be in, a room that I want to sit in and, well, play guitar. And I think a great place to start, as I mentioned, would be the guitar wall. And I've got eight guitars hung up here. You can see them all there. I'll go through them one by one real quick. We've got a Martin HD 35 with the reflection there closest to the wall. We've got a Bourgeois Country Boy Dread, formerly Courtney Hartman's guitar. Next, a Thompson DCMA. Following that, a Martin D41 Special. Following that, a Bourgeois Custom OMSC. Then a Bourgeois Custom OMC, large sound hole. Then a Santa Cruz Vintage Southerner. And then right there in the corner is a Martin Singolo 18 from 1956. Now, each of these guitars is hung up with a string swing guitar hanger. These are made in Wisconsin, and I gotta give them a shout out because they've made this room, well, complete in my eyes. A guitar den should have guitars on the wall, but you might be thinking, Tone, I'm worried about your guitars being out. Don't you have humidity issues? We're gonna get to that part in a second, but first, what I use to monitor the humidity is actually an Accurite hygrometer. I got this off of Amazon. There's a couple of different models and I actually can't remember the model number on this, but it was about, it was between 10 and 14 bucks and it monitors the temperature, the highs and lows of the humidity. I'm able to keep this room pretty stable with the humidifier that I've chosen. And I'll show you that here in a bit, but there's one more piece of gear on this wall that I want you to see. I'm actually gonna lower here and it's the record shelves. Record shelves are, well, good ones are few and far between. And I found these record shelves through a company in New York called Bolts, B-O-L-T-Z. And I've got three of them. They're stainless steel shelves and they're super, super rugged. And for the amount of records that I have, uh, those are the shelves that are really kind of, well, they're kind of roadworthy. They've been with me on two different moves now. They've held up. Uh, I've taken the wheels off of them here because they're on carpet, but ultimately these, these shelves totally rock. So there you have it. You got the, uh, uh, the guitar wall here with the string swing hangers, uh, the record shelves made by bolts, and then that Accurite hygrometer. Let's go in ahead and move over to the next wall so I can show you the humidifier and, well, my favorite cases. I've got a bevy of them. Before we move over to the next wall, I should give a special shout out to my buddy John Warren, an absolute hell of an artist, and he's responsible for a lot of the art in my home and in this uh, guitar room. Uh, he's responsible for all the skull-inspired artwork there. And then I should also show you, I got the, the beard, bell beard back there, in addition to an SWR bass amp. But my bass is at the film studio right now. So you're not gonna see that until another episode. But let's go ahead and move on to the next wall. And it's not very exciting. It's actually pretty boring. But I've got some art in the frame shop that's gonna be hung up there. Actually some really cool uh, concert posters, a Coulter wall, Rodrigo e Gabriella, and I've got uh, actually a Blink-182 uh, poster that Whitney got for me when they went to go see him in Vegas. So, but. The topic here is what's actually on the wall. So let me show you. I've got my bevy of Calton cases right there. You'll see the white case. That's an older case for a dreadnought. That maroon case or burgundy, that's also a dreadnought case. That copper glitter case is for my uh, beard Josh Swift model. And that green case in the corner is for my bourgeois OMSC. But what's really exciting, and then hopefully you'll be able to see this here, is this humidifier. Now granted, it might not be super exciting, but 
that's the humidifier that allows me to keep this room stable and allows me the comfort and peace of mind to have my guitars on the wall. Now you'll notice it's not spitting out steam out of the top. That's not what you want. This is a uh, Venta air washer. It's a German made humidifier. Uh, I think the, the model is a Venta LW45. I'm pretty sure that's the model. But these air washers or humidifiers aren't cheap. Uh, this one here I think was about three or four hundred dollars but again it makes uh, the 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 humidity the environment in here stable enough for me to be comfortable in actually hanging my guitars out and leaving them out i fill it up about once every two days and usually run it on its lowest setting and i keep the door closed for the most part now sometimes it gets a little too humid here in which case i just open the door and that allows enough dry air in to balance it out. I'm able to keep the room in a range of 45 to 50%, which is ideal for acoustic guitars. And usually the temperature down here stays anywhere from 65 on up to 68 and 69. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, there's actually one piece of art here that I should show you. This is uh, tone wood. I just pick it up. This is a, <laughs> which tone wood are you? Uh, print from Daisy Tempest over in the UK. I just got it framed and I'm excited to get it hung up, but I haven't hung it up yet because I'm waiting for the other concert posters to arrive so I can lay them out on this wall. So that is the, the Calton case wall and the Venta air washer wall. Again, those are the Calton cases behind me. And then that, that humidifier is called a Venta air washer. It's an LW45. I found mine on Amazon. It came highly recommended from a uh, luthier here in town and I've had an incredible experience with it so far. Uh, absolutely worth every penny, especially if you have a bunch of different guitars out uh, in the open air. Now we'll be turning our attention to the wall in which I spend most of my time against. I don't actually, that sounds bad. I'm not like in trouble where I had to, you know, spend recess on the wall, but this is where my guitar chair is. Uh, it's a nice armless chair that I can sit and play guitar. I got some end tables over there. You can see my copy of The Devil is in it on my end table. And then I've got this really old school typewriter desk. And that allows me to sit at that chair and uh, look up lesson videos or write lessons myself. Uh, and then you'll also see a couple amps in the corner. I've got a Supro amp for my electric guitar, something you'll see at a later date and time. Yes, I own a few electric guitars. I'll show them later. They're not really, they're not acoustic. And it's Acoustic Tuesday. What can I say? Uh, and then in front of that, you'll see my Mesa Rosette acoustic amp. It's always fun to plug in and kind of get that, that sound even at home when I'm not playing a gig, just to kind of hear what the audience will hear. And then, as I mentioned, yeah, my guitar chair, little armless chair, which is so comfortable. It can sit in there for, sit on there for hours on end and just play. Uh, you'll see that guitar we were talking about right there uh, in an ultimate stand. And then, well, we'll get to the pedals here in a second. But I've got, uh, of course, I'm a hockey fan, so I've got my Ed Belfort jersey, my Chicago Blackhawks family tree, and my Bobby Hull jersey all signed and framed up there. Kind of bring in the little hockey element to the guitar room. And then, as I mentioned, we'll look at these pedals. Now, um, <laughs> I am kind of an electric guitar dork. I'm not as well-versed in electric as I am acoustic, but I've got plenty, good batch of uh, pedals there, some wah pedals and delay, reverb, all sorts of things. And then my acoustic DIs, a bevy of them down there, different things to try out. Wozniander stomp box. And you'll notice that ear underneath my armpit. This is just a box of albums that I'm getting ready to send out. So uh, that's that wall. Now let's go to the final one. And this is where the magic happens. This is actually where I keep my turntable. And I got some great uh, pieces of furniture that I want to share with you that were inexpensive but for anybody that's interested in kind of decking out a room in a turntable friendly way this furniture totally rocks and uh, it's made i believe it's made in new york uh, but uh, let's go ahead and look at that okay starting in the familiar you'll see the pedals uh, back there this this wall has a window on it so it might look a little weird in the camera but this is kind of my turntable station and you'll be able to see that it's furniture specifically designed for my turntable and speakers. I've got some Pioneer bookshelf speakers on the speaker stands, and then I've got a U-turn turntable. You can't really see that in the light, but I've got a U-turn turntable uh, sitting on top of a turntable stand. Now, all of that furniture was made by a company called 
Line Phono, L-I-N-E-P-H-O-N-O. And I got the plywood speaker stands and the plywood turntable stand. And I think all together, it was maybe, I think it was just shy of 600 bucks, uh, but a great solution for a standalone turntable stand and speaker stand. I can move them if I want to. They're super sturdy, easy to put together, uh, and provide some nice little record storage there on the bottom. You'll see that's where I keep my new purchases. Those are the ones I have to listen to. The bottom shelf is stuff I've listened to and needs to go back on the other shelves. Uh, so that's pretty much the record zone. You'll also see some rock and sock uh, stools there. There's one in case I have folks over to jam. There's the other one, dry erase board with song ideas. I've got a closet here, but there's nothing really interesting in there. It's boxes and boxes of my albums. Uh, so when somebody orders them, uh, I can send them out. So that's pretty much it. That's my guitar den. This is where I spend a lot of my guitar playing time, most of my guitar playing time. And it's just really a cool environment for me to sit in and be inspired. And as I mentioned, I'm not trying to you know, show off the stuff that I have here. I simply wanted to share it with you in case you wanted to create a space that was inspirational to you. I would strongly recommend doing it because it does have an enormous impact on how much you want to play guitar and how much fun you have while you're playing it. Oh, one more thing uh, before I before I let you go on this tour, I want to answer a couple of those ask me anything questions. Uh, I probably have time for about one or two, uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. But if you're curious on any of the pieces of gear that I've used, I'm going to go ahead and link them in the description below if you should so choose to uh, want to check them out. Uh, whether it's the Venta Air Washer, the AccuRite Hygrometer, the String Swings, uh, the Line Phono uh, Turntable Furniture, or any of the other stuff that I mentioned. So I'll make sure to put those in the description below. Now let's, uh, well, let's head up to the upstairs and uh, I'll answer some of those Ask Me Anything questions. I've made it upstairs and I want to do a couple Ask Me Anything questions that were submitted at asktonyp.com. This was way back when we celebrated three years of the Acoustic Tuesday show and there were so many awesome questions that we just couldn't feature in the three year anniversary show. I figured, well, let's just make this, well, kind of an Acoustic Tuesday tradition. So if you ever think of a question that you want to ask me, go ahead and ask at asktonyp.com. It's a quick little video submission. You can do it all right there and it takes 60 seconds or less. So that being said, let's go ahead and dig into a couple of questions that were asked. Hey Tony, happy anniversary. I know it's Tony's acoustic challenge, but I'm dying to know, what's Tony's take on electric? What's my take on electric guitar? Um, I love it. I gotta be honest. In fact, if it wasn't for electric guitar, I never would have gotten into acoustic. My first uh, guitar heroes were Johnny Winter and pretty much any metal band that I could listen to, mainly Slipknot. So uh, it was because of the electric guitar that I got into acoustic guitar. So I actually really dig electric guitar. I just like the expressiveness that acoustic offers and well, there's just a lot less gear with acoustic. Awesome question. Uh, thank you so much for asking. Let's go ahead and well, let's dig into one more. I think we have time. Hi Tony, quick question for you. Do you ever play electric guitar? Uh, and if so, you know, do you sort of really fire up and get infused by it or it doesn't, doesn't buzz for you? Interested to know. Another question on the electric guitar train. I love it, and I'm, I'm glad you are asking me this because I do, I do get enthused by electric guitar, but I find it, actually, this is interesting. I'm finding electric guitar more difficult than acoustic. I feel like when I pick up the electric guitar, a lot of my acoustic skill set gets kind of thrown out the window because electric guitar has so much more sustain and it takes, uh, it takes almost, well, it takes less fretting effort and it takes less, in, I guess in my experience, picking effort as well. So it, it kind of, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a teeter-totter. It allows so much more in terms of the sustain and things like that, but uh, I find my acoustic guitar technique kind of doesn't necessarily translate over uh, as well. It's kind of a learning curve for me. It's interesting because uh, as I mentioned in the previous question, you know, I came to guitar via electric guitar and I spent a lot of time playing electric guitar very early on. But once I got bit by the acoustic bug, I really kind of didn't play electric until actually earlier this year. I bought my first kind of electric guitar later. Uh, and I'll show you, I actually, well, I bought my first, second and third electric guitar this year. 
that's another story. I'll actually show you those on a, a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday, but I really appreciate the question. I, I really dig electric guitar, but there's so many differences between acoustic and electric, and it's really apparent when I switch from one to the other. Uh, I do enjoy them both, but for, for very, very different reasons. The electric guitar allows me to experiment a lot, whereas the acoustic guitar is kind of like, well, it feels like home base for me, I guess is what I'll say. Uh, awesome questions. I really appreciate those questions. And again, if anybody has other questions, please just visit asktonyp.com and you'll be able to submit a video uh, asking me a question just like these fine folks did. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me today. I really appreciate your time. For those that ask questions, I really appreciate that. And ultimately, I just appreciate you being a guitar geek. Now, I'm not gonna forget this week. I do wanna take a quick sneak peek into next week. Next week, I'm gonna be telling you the story of another guitar, my OM28 Marquee, and the first very difficult two weeks of its life with me. In fact, that guitar, um, it's amazing that guitar just didn't grow legs and walk out on me because it had a rough go the first two weeks I took it home. We'll also look at two box sets of records that I got that are the most masterful box sets I've ever seen in my life. And I also think, uh, I think I'm gonna share with you a set of strings that I just tried that weren't necessarily my personal cup of tea, but they might work for one of your instruments. So I want you to know about them. And that's all coming to you next week on, uh, I guess we can call it Acoustic Tuesdays from Home. Thanks again for your time today. Thanks for being a guitar geek. And uh, if you like this candid kind of thing, make sure to check me out on Instagram. You can follow me at Tack Guitar, and that's uh, at Tack, T-A-C dot guitar. And I post all sorts of different kind of playing videos, at home stuff, and each Saturday I post what I'm listening to so you can discover some new artists as well. Uh, again, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for being a guitar geek, and of course, I'll see you next week. Cheers.